Okay, so we're ready to start. We're in the middle of a series called the 70 most difficult question in Judaism. Some of the most difficult topics. And we began with creation, we went on to evolution. We spoke about the age of the universe, what happened to the dinosaurs, how human beings are so special that they have been endowed with free will. So we explained what free will is, the limitations of free will. We went into the subject of mazal, mazalot, astrology. And now we're going to go into a very esoteric topic. And that is, why did God create the angels and the demons? What is their role in this creation? Why are they necessary? I've also decided to add an additional question that some of you may have heard, may have encountered, and are possibly eager to know the Jewish answer. Is there life in other planets, in other worlds? What is the Jewish position on that? So I've combined the two. Next week will be also another fascinating topic. What does Judaism have to say about UFOs? What are they? And this is a follow-up of tonight's topic. So if you have a good understanding of tonight's lecture, you will be able to understand next week's lecture as well. Beginning with the question as far as is there life elsewhere, David Melech makes a very strong and clear statement. Hashamayim shamayim l'ashem ve'aretz natan l'vne adam. The heavens belong to God, and He has given mankind earth. Now you can of course explain that pasuk just to mean that He is in the heavens and that we are down here, but that does not necessarily give us the answer to our question does not necessarily prove or disprove if there are life, there's life elsewhere. I agree with that. It's not proof, but it's a little bit of a remez. There's a little bit of an insinuation here, a little bit of an indication that the reality is that we are in this world, and as far as we know, there are no other physical worlds out there. Physical life as we know it to be here. So. I was very careful in choosing my words, as far as we know, doesn't mean we know everything, but as far as we know, there is no physical life in the form that we know it to exist over here. According to the Kabbalah, this world that we live in is very specific, very customized. It's called Olam Ha'asiya. There is Olam Abriya, there is Olam Yitzira, there is Atzilut. This is Asiya. This is the lowest level in the creation of worlds. And this is the most physical world that there is. A world of Asiya meaning a world of deeds, a world of Maasim, a world of action, where people perform, human beings, physical beings need to perform. There's actually a need for performance, for deeds. In order for deeds to be performed, it has to be physical. In the spiritual realm, we don't have the exact kind of performance that we have in the physical realm. So this world, as we know it, is physical. And the further you get away from planet Earth, even the scientists will tell you that it becomes less and less physical. In what sense? Well, nobody knows 100% for sure, but based on the technology that we have today, spaceships, telescopes, and so forth, scientists have discovered what they think is that certain planets like Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune are more gas and very little core. As you know, the Earth is basically earth and you have water but even beneath the water it's just earth it's made out of of course various minerals but it's solid 
if you go to Jupiter and Saturn, there may be, they're not sure, there may be a solid core in the nucleus, in the center, they're not sure. But they can tell that the outer layers, a good deal of these big planets, is just gas. Different kinds of gases. A very interesting observation that perhaps, I'd like to say, shows that the further you get away, that's because that's not the case with Mars, Venus, Mercury, that are closer to us, but the further you get away, somehow it becomes more and more gaseous, less physical. And the further you go away, and you go to the stars and the other galaxies, as far as they can tell, as far as we know, there is no Earth or no physical hard core, it's all gas, different kinds of gases, but just basically gas. Interesting, it could be that this has something to do with that the further you get away from the center of all attention, which is this earth, the more it becomes spiritual, if we can call it that, less physical. Therefore, based on what we know, there is no other life as our life elsewhere, based on tradition. We were not told that there is other life elsewhere. Plus, scientifically, based on what is known today, there is no other place in the large universe that can accommodate life the way we know it. Okay, so what's the answer to the question, is there life elsewhere? As far as we know, there isn't. We were not told so. And scientifically, from what we can see and from what we know, there is no world out there that can accommodate human life as it can over here. Why? Because the sun is very, very far away once you get to even a place called Mars. Very cold, can support life. And as far as the gases, oxygen, nitrogen, all the gases that we have here in various percentages and concentrations, they don't exist in those concentrations and percentages elsewhere. And if you do not have that exact balance of light, heat, and gases, then you cannot support life. So that's very simple. Simply stated, from what we know, there is no life anywhere else. What if somebody were one day to come and prove that there is life elsewhere? What would Judaism have to say? You see? There is life. What are we going to say? Fine. We welcome them. Big deal. That does not contradict anything that I've said, anything that is known. Contradiction there is none, because nothing is clear. Nothing is 100%, it's not written anywhere. All I said was that from what we know, and from what we've observed, and from common sense too, based on science, there is none. If somebody wants to prove one of these days that there is, fine, we'll accept it. It will not change our Torah, it will not change our beliefs, it will not be in any way a problem. But if somebody wants to know an immediate answer, most likely 99.99 percent based on what we know there is no life as we know it the physical life the exact same life as we know it elsewhere however on this planet i have some surprises for you on this planet yes this not elsewhere there are other forms of life the zohar says that planet earth is like an onion there are various layers various planes or various, various dimensions and we are only aware of the physical dimension that we're in but there are other dimensions, there are other layers and there are other creatures, there are other creations that are not as physical as we are that live with us either in this world, in this I guess plane or underneath the ground, or above in space, it makes no difference, but there are other creatures that have been created. And they exist, and we don't see them, and I'm going to explain soon why we don't see them. 
And some of them are called angels, and some of them are called demons. They have other names, but I'm going to simplify it. I'm just going to tell you that they are called Malachim, they're called Shadim, but there are actually various kinds of Malachim. You may have seen it in the Sidur, Seraphim, Dofanim, Vehayot HaKodesh. You may, have seen, you may have seen various kinds of names for Shadim or demons. There are some called Il Olim, some are called broadly Mazikim, different kinds of names. But what they all have in common is that they are spiritual. Spiritual in nature and not physical. And we cannot see them. Why can't we see them? Because we are physical beings and whoever is a complete physical being is not always capable of seeing something which is spiritual. That's just one of the limitations of mankind. But uh, however, if you have a pet, a dog, or a cat, they can see sometimes things that we cannot see. Their perception and their senses are more in tune or more developed, and they are aware of a, of a pending earthquake that is about to come. And this is not something that the rabbis have to tell us, even scientists have discovered, right? Many of you perhaps have noticed it too that somehow the pets went crazy before an earthquake occurred. Because the pets, the animals, are able to sense or see things that human beings cannot. And why can't human beings have the same abilities as animals? So the rabbi tells you should be thankful. Oi, my boy, if you would be able to see what they can see, you would go crazy. We would not be able to live a normal life. We would not be able to conduct ourselves Normally, if we were to see everything around us, could you imagine if you saw the bacteria in what you eat? You wouldn't eat anything. And believe me, there's bacteria no matter how much you wash that. Not, a, not all bacteria is bad. Baruch Hashem, we don't see. Rabbis tell us, HaKadosh Baruch Hu did us a big favor that we should not be able to see. You know why? Because there are more Shadim in this world than human beings. Well, how many human beings do we have? China has a little over a billion. Two billion already? I stopped counting. <laughs> there are more Shadim and more Mazikim than there are human beings. So imagine, they're all over the place. And Baruch Hashem, we cannot see them. However, at times, at a certain time, you can see them. You may be one day sitting, minding your own business at home, eating breakfast, reading, reading I, didn't, I was going to say newspaper, but I'd rather not, reading something positive, something good, and all of a sudden you blink and you thought you saw something cross the room. Right? Has that ever happened to you? Yeah. And you look around, there's nothing there. Right? Something there? Sometimes the eye is able to catch a glimpse. According to the Kabbalah, if you are in the same room as your wife that is about to give birth, obviously once she's, the baby is coming out, you're not allowed to hold her. There are various halachot of what you're allowed to do and what you cannot see and where you should be looking at. Nonetheless, it's very possible that if you're lucky, at the moment the baby comes out, you may be able to see something entering that little baby's body from the head. And you may even recognize, oh, you just saw your grandfather, you just saw an uncle entering that baby. Because the, the, the tselem, the image, or a portion of that neshama enters into the child as soon as the baby comes out of the mother's womb and it enters through the head. Most people do not see it. You have to have either a zechut, or they have to have a reason why they want you to be aware of that. But it's possible, at times, people are able to see that which is spiritual. But these are positive experiences. This is not a demon you're seeing. This is something positive. There are spiritual beings that from time to time we are allowed to see. You want an example of a negative experience that you can't avoid seeing? Well, the rabbis tell us right before a person departs from this world, they give him permission to see that which he could not have seen while he was alive. What's that? He actually sees the Malach Mavit. He actually sees the angel, the angel of death 
as long as he's not in a coma, as long as he's fully awake, and if he's not under any medication and he, his faculties are completely with him, he can actually tell you, you know, by the way, I need to go soon, I see him here. And this has happened to many people who have actually witnessed, they have heard the man who is about to leave the world within the next few minutes that he sees. What else does he see? He sees all of a sudden his relatives come to accompany him to the next world. Everybody sees something. It all depends at what stage of the departure, right before, a minute before, a day before, depending possibly also on his merits and how great of an individual this man is. You know, I don't have the answers to all the questions. You know, I'll let you know when we come to that. When I, you know, after 120, you know, if there's any way I can share it with you. But from what we know from other people who have gone through it, who have been there, obviously the individual who's about to leave this world is able to see that which he was not able to see while he was alive. They give him permission to see certain things. Now, it is possible, by the way, to see many incredible things when you're asleep. And that's going to be another topic that we'll be talking about dreams. The significance of dream, the meaning behind the dreams, how do we know if it's a true dream or not. Once you are sleeping and the physical body is at rest, the neshama that is within us is able to go up, depending on what it performed during the day, what it did, various levels, and it is able to see many things that it would not be able to see or experience while it was fully awake. And in the Kabbalah it is actually brought down what one can do during the day to be zocheh, to have the merit that his neshama should go higher and higher and higher, that his dreams should be real, clean and pure. Basically, there are various instructions, I, I don't have the time now to go through every one of them, but if you're a good person, you conduct yourself properly during the day, you encourage others to do good deeds, you have a better chance that the neshama at night will go higher than it would otherwise. So, so far what we've covered is that HaKadosh Baruch Hu did create other beings in this world, we're not alone, but these beings are spiritual in nature. Now we want to know why He created them for, what's their purpose? Why does HaKadosh Baruch Hu need angels? What, why does He need demons? A Malach, the word Malach means Misharet, it means a messenger. Malachim are messengers of Hashem. They partake in many of the functions of this universe. God created the world, but He continues to be mashgiach, as we spoke about two weeks ago. He continues to supervise this world. And He has servants, and He has beings that He created that do His job. We are more used to the physical beings that do His job. Human beings and animals. We all do his job. We're supposed to at least do his job. What is the difference between the human being's job and the malach's job? Well, there's a big difference. The human being has free will. He has free will because he's a partner in this olam ha'asiya, in this physical world. Hashem wanted to have human beings who will perform certain deeds to bring down the kingdom of God into the physical world, the olam ha'asiya, and he will reward these human beings if they do so, if they do as he instructed them. And since he will reward them for being a partner in this creation, he also had to give them free will. And the free will allows them to oblige or to refuse. Human beings have Yetzarim, they have the Yetzarah, the evil inclination. They can rebel, they can refuse. So human beings are very different than Malachim in the sense that they can do something constructive or they can do something destructive in this world called Olam Asiya, a world of deeds, physical world. Angels cannot be destructive. Angels do not have free will. Therefore they have no need for Torah. They don't have a Yetzirah. They're basically almost programmed, you can call it. Even animals, birds, fish, 
because they have no free will, the way they function is through instinct. I'm sure most of you understand what instincts are. And it's through their, their instincts that they are born with, that they know what it means to run from fire, they want to survive, they realize that they have an important mission to accomplish, even as an eagle, as an owl, as a snake, as a rat, as a snail, whatever. Everyone realizes that they are important. Everything that Hashem created in the world has a purpose. And David Melech came to this realization when he asked Hashem one day, why did you make spiders? That's one thing I can't figure out. And I don't know if you know the story, but basically the way it goes is when he was running away from Shaul, running for his life, he hid in the cave. And Hashem made a miracle. He bought the spider. It's a spider. I want you to make a big web right away. And the spider made a big web right away. A web that would have taken weeks, if not months. A big web to cover the entrance. The web was there. It was ready. When Shaul came by with his soldiers, they didn't think of going into the cave. Why? Because they saw the web. They said nobody entered the cave, otherwise they would have broken the web. So obviously when David Melech realized the miracle, says, I see that there is a need for spiders too. Now I did not mean to say with this story that that's the only purpose of why God created the spider, to make webs. Obviously every creature, everything in creation has some unique mission. But David Melech was now convinced that everything is there for a purpose, everything is tov, everything is good, everything is meaningful. We need everything in this world. And we need Malachim too, because in the same way that God has human beings performing in the physical world, He needs, or He wanted to have, I should say, entities or beings that function in the spiritual world. After all, we said before, that there is a spiritual world. There's a physical world and there's a spiritual world. And in the spiritual world you need physical beings that operate, that do everything that needs to be done in the physical world. But in the spiritual world you need spiritual beings. And why do we have the spiritual beings in the spiritual world? What are they supposed to do? What do they accomplish that are so important? So several weeks ago I spoke about how in God's world, there's also the legislative, the executive, and what's the third branch? Legislative? Judiciary, right? So in God's world, right? We have the various branches of government. God has the various branches of operations in this world. He is the one that legislates. It's his Torah. They are his rules, whether they are the rules of nature, the rules of physics, regardless. And the rules of the Torah, the spiritual rules. He is the legislative branch. But he also has an executive branch. He has a judicial branch. And part of the executive branch involves human beings, animals. Part of the judiciary branch are the Malachim and the Shadim. Angels and demons, therefore, for the most part, comprise the judiciary branch or, or, or judiciary operations in this world. Even though they, they are in the spiritual world, their influence, many of them, is felt in the physical world. 